On today's G3 Sportsman, we're getting to shoot ducks, doves, pheasants, quail, and even some rabbits. And the best thing about it, the season's always open. If you've been looking for a way to be ready come hunting season or need to stay sharp during the season, well then I think I found a way to get the rust off and keep it off. Load them up, because it's time to do some shooting. Let's get her started. Oh. The mallard escaped. <laughs> I lost him. <laughs> you mean my fish? He fell off. Well, that thing pulled twice as hard as a silver. Look at this cat. <laughs> oh, yeah, you catch that. Nice fish. Thank you, fish. That's what I'm talking about. Get you some of that. You know, most of us get jacked up come hunting season. And, and if you're like me, then you're, you're not quite ready. You just don't have the, have the shoot knife when, it, when the season starts. But I have found a way that I'm sure a lot of you out there know, but for those of you that don't, a great way to get ready before the season. Now, I know you big game hunters out there, y'all sight in your rifles and everything else, but you know, that's about as boring as it can get. I'm talking about for the shotgunner out there, where you get to practice up for your wing shoot, where you're actually shooting at targets that are similar to some of the hunts that you go on. That's what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna to be out there at Ozark Shooters between Springfield, Missouri and Branson, Missouri. Just a wonderful place out there to get ready for the hunting season. We're getting ready to start shooting here with Eric here. Uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna walk him through this course today. We're just gonna shoot all of our different stations. I'm just gonna be here to take Eric through and show him what we got laid out this week. So get ready for the hunting season coming up and everything. One of the things that, that I like to do kind of in the early part of the year, late summer, is try to go out and shoot around the sporting clays about every year. It's kind of a handy thing to get you prepared for the upcoming shotgun seasons, whether it's dove hunting or waterfowl, even quail hunting. The thing that's neat about the sporting clays is you never know what you're gonna get. Like Jordan was saying, they change the setup every week, so it kind of mixes it up. You may have the springing teal, the bouncing rabbit, and flushing quail and everything, and it makes it really representative of realistic hunting situations and it's a great way to prepare for the hunting season. This is going to be a report pair. Report pair in sporting clays, what that means is you call for your first target, after the trapper hears your gun go off, it's the reports of the gun and he throws the second target. So what we're going to do now is we're going to step in here and see what we've got to look at. application process. This might be a, a, a situation where you might have a flushing quail coming out kind of low and, and gradually rising going away from you. He may be just burled up right in there though. There you go! Good shot. Good shot. And then that second bird could actually be a duck coming in on a pond. <laughs> We'll see how we do here. Oh! Okay, that'll work. The gun I'm going to shoot today is the new Beretta A391 Extrema 2. Uh, it's a new gun I just got recently, and it's the gun I'm going to plan on hunting with mostly this fall. So I'm going to try it out today and see if I can hit a few targets with it. It'll be the first time that I've shot it, 
but it's a great made shotgun and uh, I'm hoping to do well with it. We'll see how it goes. Just like Eric here, he's shooting a Beretta. I'm also shooting a Beretta. It's a Beretta 391. Looks a little different than his. His is the hunting model. Um, mine's just the regular standard Beretta 391. It's parallel target. Looks a little different than most. I've had a custom Winnick stock put on it. Of course, different features as you can tell. I've done a little bit of different stuff to it. Um, I brought it out, set it next to Eric's, and everybody's giving me a hard time on how mine looks compared to his. Um, but we'll just see what happens when we start shooting here a little bit later today. Here we are on station four. Uh, this one here looks like it's going to be a true pair. Looks like we got two targets in front of us. It's going out. They're going to cross. It looks like what the target setter is trying to do here is cross our eyes. So we're going to see if we can't pull this one out here. Let's see a pair there, Trapper. Pull. Pull. That didn't work out quite like I thought. Let's try this again. Huh? That was a little better that way. Station four, after watching Jordan shoot those, I might compare it to a, a dove hunting situation. A lot of times you'll have doves that come in in a pair, and you know how crazy those doves fly. And a lot of times they may cross when you see them coming in, they'll be separated, and right at the last minute, they'll make that dart and cut. Start coming right here. You got this? Crossed my gun, I couldn't decide on which one to choose. Is that the last one? That's it. Okay. Move on. Every time we go through our sporting clays, we take a trapper with us and he keeps score for us and everything like that. So we know what we end up with as we come out. Um, every time we shoot a pair, he'll call out either dead pair, means you hit both targets, or he'll call out dead loss, means you hit one, missed one, or he'll call out lost pair, that means you missed both of them. Though you can kind of keep a running track in your mind too to know what your total is when you step out of the stand. I retired about a year ago, a little over a year ago, and I got to shooting down here in my spare time, and they kind of kind of got annoyed with me. I spent too much time down here, so uh, they wanted to know if I'd help out, and I said, yeah, I'd enjoy it. And as a trapper, what I do, I try to make your shoot the enjoyable, I try to make it safe, I keep score, I pull, and then if there's nothing going on, we maintain the traps, maintain the trap fields. Sporting clays is, is just a lot of fun. You can, you can really improve your skills, hunting skills, just, it's, it's just hard to beat if you like the outdoors. Here we are on station six. This is going to be a true pair. We've got two targets coming from the left side, it looks like. Uh, like I've said before, we change our course every week. So even though station six is a true pair this week, it may be a report pair, and they may be coming from a totally different place next week. But we got a true pair today, so we're going to step up here and shoot them. Throw me a couple slow ones there, Trapper. I can do it. <laughs> oh! That works. Again, I'd call that like a left to right dove in a dove field. Kind of that typical coming around the fence row kind of presentation. Fast, fast. Kind of hard to hit. 
Of course, kind of like we, we've been saying the whole time with the sporting clays, what's so fun and interesting and unique about it is it's, it's really representative of true to life hunting situations. You know, I've kind of got an advantage here because I'm always shooting second on these stands. When Jordan comes up and shoots the bird, like I say, I can normally kind of look at how he picks out his shots and go from there. But in a hunting situation, you don't have that, that ability to do that or that luxury. You never know from which angle or what speed those birds are going to come in at. So this is still good practice for you guys that want to come out early in the season like this. This is the end of August. And you know, dove season's right around the corner, and it's a great time to kind of prepare, learn a little bit about your shotgun that you've had in the corner for the last nine months, and uh, get yourself polished back up. I'd recommend it to anybody. Here we are on station seven. We're getting close to the end. Um, we're gonna step in here. This is gonna be a report pair. We got a target set here that's down below our feet. Uh, a lot of sporting clays courses, you don't see that all the time. A lot of people's got flat terrain. Here we got a little bit where we can work with, so we put a machine down below your feet, give you a bird that's coming out from underneath your feet. Then we got one that's crossing from the right side. We're gonna step up here and see what, how this will turn out. Puh. There we go. Finally got a station that I can shoot. Jordan, this looks like an excellent kind of a pheasant flush situation. Um, that's the biggest thing I noticed from where I come from talk about that flat country that's where I live and to see this kind of a setup where you've got this angle such steep hills it really makes a realistic situation interesting and different that's, and that's what makes hunters better shooters oh. nice I like that one that was fun what's next more. It's more of the same. Here we are on station eight. This is kind of the station a lot of people look forward to shooting. This one's a little different than most on this course. As you can see behind me and Eric here, we got a big tower set up here. Uh, it's probably about, about 35, 40 feet up, but about where we're standing, it's about 45, 50 feet away from us because it's sitting up here on this hill. Uh, we're going to throw a target out of the top of that tower. And we're also going to have one stand here, right down here beside us here. So, uh, like I say, a lot of people like shooting these. You don't get to shoot a lot of overhead targets. Um, but with the terrain and the tower we got built, we're gonna see what we can do on this one. What do you think? Looks like the old single mallard coming in quiet. It kind of surprises you, come in behind you. That's one of those you empty your gun on. <laughs> That's gonna be tough. Huh? There we go. Got that one figured out too. Like Eric mentioned a while ago, a bird gets out there in a hurry. Boy, I'm telling you. That one coming out of that tire, if that isn't the old single miler that comes in quiet, I don't know what is. You guys at home will know what I'm talking about here. Oh! Mallard escaped. <laughs> That's the thing, hunting in the in the timber. They're getting in trees. Oh. Oh. Have to buy a better duck call to get him in closer. <laughs> that it? That's it. That's good. Move on to some easy ones. We got the train going down over the hill, so these birds gonna look a lot lower than they are. That's an, a deception that we like to use when we set targets out here. Uh, it's gonna be a report pair, just like we've shot before. So we're gonna step in here and see what we can do. Good shoot. That first one's a lot lower than I thought. When Eric steps in here, you make sure you keep it low. That looks low. That's the old low 
low single quail shot right there. You gotta watch and not shoot the dog. Cause I know my dog will be right on his tail. Got the pair that time. That's the one I was looking for. That was fun. Put a couple more quail in my pipe. You guys have probably seen a few of the rabbit hunt stuff that we've done. We've done a couple of rabbit hunts here in the past and we'll probably do some more. This is gonna be kind of representative of that rabbit springing out of the brush, except we're gonna throw in a bird with it. Hey, you watch that rabbit right there's got my number. <laughs> he was flying though. Man! And uh, if Fred's out there, Fred Baum, if you're watching this, I hope I can make you proud and get the rabbit so we don't have to chase him all day. Huh? Whew, Rabbit escaped. Oh! It's her. Had a slow rabbit, I think, on that last one. Now those are shooters just isn't sporting clays. I mean, they have got a world famous trap and skeet facility there too. So after our sporting clay shoot was over, we asked Jordan to demonstrate the difference between trap and skeet. <laughs> now this will separate the men from the boys, I'm telling you. But it didn't intimidate Jordan none. When those clays hit the sky, he made dust out of them. But tell me a little bit about trap and skeet. I don't really know that much about trap and skeet. Just just kind of separate the two. Okay. What are they? Yeah, a trap, what it is, it's a, uh, it's a game you shoot. They range from 16 to 27 yards. What that means is you're already that far away from the machine when it fires. The machine is inside a concrete house, and that machine is at one height, but it oscillates back and forth, left and right. Um, so you know, you know the height of the target, but you don't know which direction it's gonna go. Mm -hmm. And the more advanced you get, the farther you can move back to 27 yards. Basically, you start at 16 yards, and you got five different positions you shoot from, and you shoot five at each, at each station, that which equals 25 targets. So basically, that's what you do with trap. Now the skeet is, it's a semicircle. It's a half semicircle, and there's eight, there's eight different stations on it. What they are, they have a high house, which is on the left side of the field. It's elevated about 20 feet. Then we have a low house, which is on the right side of the field, and it's about, about waist level. So all these birds go left to right. You move in a similar circle, so you make it harder as you move around the course. You know, you're probably thinking, man, to get out there and have that much fun, it, it's gotta cost an arm and a leg. That is hardly the case. You get 20, 25 bucks, a couple of boxes of shells. You got two or three hours of some of the most fun shotgunning activities that you could possibly do. Go out there with your friends, yuck it up with everybody, have a big time. And if you've got a place like this in your area, I, I, I highly recommend to utilize your resources. If not for anything else, just to knock the rust off before hunting season and keeping you sharp during the season. It's a big time, and I know dang good and well that all of you will enjoy it. But that's all the time we got for this week's show. Hope you liked it. And just remember, we'll be out there doing something somewhere next week right here on the G3 Sportsman. Thanks for watching. You know, we're just, just north of Springfield, Missouri, and just south of Branson, Missouri. It's a tourist. I'm north of Branson, ain't I? You're north of Branson and south, south of, of Springfield. Springfield. Yeah. That's pretty. Nice! Huh? It's still on it. Gotta get you out more often. See how much fun you have with us? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Where are we going next?